Good morning. So this is Saturday, and um, we're reading through Job uh, 6 to 9 today. And it's really, it's I find commenting on, on Job like this uh, uh, to be a real challenge because, uh, well, as I do for, for much uh, of the, the word as we read through it, but but Job, there's there's so much to Job that you could um, you could really mine here, and there's there's uh, things that you have to go back and forth on and, and compare with other parts of the word to to really get um, a, a solid understanding of things that are going on here. So to to make comment on on a quick read through uh, can be challenging, but there are some themes that we can pick up on, and and one of the one of the things you pick up on right away is that. Um, Job feels that there's been an injustice here, which which puts him in conflict because he believes that God is the perfect judge, that only God can can. And remember, he's they they only know him as creator here. So uh, he he looks to God, and God has always been good to him. And he looks to him, and he sees that God makes favorable judgment, and and he trusts that judgment. But now he's in a in a position where he feels that he's being punished. He's taking this as a punishment. Um, he feels that he's being punished for no just reason, and in in the and in, in the frustration is that he can't he can't present his case. He can't find out what he did wrong um, in order to make amends for it at all. And so there's this frustration, and and his friends reinforce this idea of of punishment. Um, and Job is sitting there saying, but I'm innocent. I don't understand any of this. I don't understand what's going on. I know that God is a great judge, uh, but I know also that I am innocent, that I haven't done anything wrong. And at the same time, nobody can stand before God as innocent. <laughs> There's all this, this going on. And I'm sure we've all been there where we've, we've been working through something and we look at all the sides of, of, of the argument. And, and Job is saying, I know I, I haven't done anything. I've done everything I can um, to, to make sure that I stand innocent before God. But I, I do know that nobody can stand innocent before God because only he is innocent. Um, and, and, and so um, his friends reinforce this whole idea. Um, and we'll see all the way through this that they're going to they're accusing him of doing something wrong because um, the the rule is that uh, God gives good to those who are good and he gives bad to those who are bad and you know we still have that idea that notion that thought um, because uh, to this day when natural disasters hit um, uh, the world will there, there are those in the church that will uh, call that as the, as the judgment of God upon that city. That city should have repented. That city needs to repent before something worse happens, uh, and and so on. Um, which is really crazy, because um, especially in the day and age that we live, we have to be so careful that we understand that there is a there's a difference. Uh, between when when God had to bring judgment on a situation where it couldn't, where where people people couldn't get any worse. They were they were they were as bad as they could get. They, they there was no hope. There was no way of them turning around. They were as bad as they would get. They were a hundred percent given over to to rebellion against God. Um, so judgment was brought into those situations, but we we live in an age of grace now. We live in this period of grace where where God has has created this this atmosphere where um, everybody and anybody can come to Him. Everybody and anybody He wants everybody saved. He wants everybody saved. So He's 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 not bringing judgment on people. It's it's like um, the disciples with with Jesus when Jesus was calling out the cities that that wouldn't accept Him, and they wanted to call down the fires of, of heaven. On on, on these cities and, and Jesus saying, you, you guys don't get this. <laughs> I haven't come to take life. I've come to give life, I've come to give life. And um, that is the age that we live in. We got to stop calling out these judgment things and, and understand we're here to give life. We're not here to take life. We're here to give life. We're here to give life. And listen, we're coming into, uh, there, there's some real difficult times that we're going to go through. Um, coming up and, and they're great and it's going to be filled with joy and it's going to be filled with peace uh, but we have to have the roadmap and the only way we can have the roadmap is to understand the, the, the mission statement that we have and it's to give life it's to tear down the works of the enemy and to give life to give life that's what we're here for 
so many of us would fit in perfect as Job's comforters. <laughs> Here we went. <laughs> anyway, um, we, we got to get on with the mission. Yeah. God bless.